all. I'm an advocate in the High Court. I'm a Hindu married to a Christian. My question, which has come to my mind, is after hearing the uh, thoughts of doctor and the uh, teachings of Islam regarding killing. If killing is strictly prohibited in Islam, why don't the Muslim spiritual leaders openly criticize and unitedly fight the killings going on in the name of jihad? How can Muslims allow Islam to be misused and misquoted by a few of those Muslims who are maligning the name of the entire community in the entire world? Sister asked a very good question. She said that she was impressed with the teaching of Islam, that Islam is against killing innocent human beings. But how come all the Muslim leaders don't get together and condemn the killing that is going on in the name of jihad? And just because of few black sheep, Islam is being maligned. Sister, for the detailed answer, you should listen to my last talk in the last conference, one year back in November 2008, my final speech of the second international peace conference was media and Islam war of peace. The main thing to blame, it is the media. It is the media which picks up black sheep of the community and they portray as though they are exemplary Muslims. It is the media. So what you see in the media is not what's exactly happening. Quran clearly mentions in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills any other human being, whether it be a Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves any human being, it is as though he has saved the whole of humankind. So killing any innocent human being is a sin in Islam. Not only is it a sin, it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. So anyone killing you find cases taking place, going on the street and a bomb blast takes place, etc. Killing innocent human being is totally prohibited. It's clear cut. And when I went to USA, I went to UK, we have Muslim organization condemning. What bomb blast took place in the tube station in London, we condemn it. I went to America, I found some of the Muslim organizations condemning what's happening in 9-11. I agree with them. I agree with them. What happened in 9-11? A few thousand people killed. It is to be condemned. Who did it? I don't know. I'm not saying Muslim did it. It is the media which is saying there's no proof at all. There's no proof. But whoever did it? There are, if you go on the internet, you have various documentaries showing that it was a government job, inside job. George Bush did it. I don't know who did it. Whoever did it, killing thousands of innocent human beings in 9-11, in the Twin Tower bombing, is to be condemned. More than 50 people killed in the tube bombing in London is to be condemned. More than 100 people killed in Bombay in July, a couple of years back, in the train bombing in Bombay is to be condemned. But don't put a full stop. Simultaneously, I also condemn the thousands of people killed in Afghanistan, the thousands of people killed in Iraq, the thousands of people killed in Palestine. I call this white-collar terrorism. You know what they are doing? They are giving missiles. They are sending bombs. There in Palestine, they are fighting with stones. And they are called as terrorists. America is sending bomber Patriot missiles. They are sending cluster bombs. Cluster bomb means it falls, it breaks up into many bombs and kills thousands of Afghanis. For what? It is a coward act. Therefore, I said in my last lecture, the biggest terrorist in the past couple of decades, it is George Bush. Number one. There is no one who has killed as many people as George Bush has killed. And now he's no longer there. In Iraq, he has put a sanction on medicine and half a million children were killed in Iraq because of George Bush. We know very well, even if I agree that one person was hiding there, there is no proof that Bin Laden did it. Even if he did it, imagine for one man, you are killing thousands of people. It is absurd. What we find, it is the media which is portraying. Media which is portraying that Muslims are doing this. I do know there are black sheep, sister. There are black sheep in a community. There are black sheep in every community. Indian media talks about Kashmir. How often do they talk about Assam? Next the light, the Maoist. You know the biggest threat to India are the Maoists. What are they doing? They are bombarding the police stations. They are killing the police.
the maximum killing that has been done in India by the Maoist, by the communist, the LTT, Hindus. Who calls them Hindu terrorist? You go to Assam, the Christian terrorist. When the Hindus do it, you call it LTTE, Liberation Tamil Tigers, LM. If you go to UK, IRA, Irish Republican Army, they are Catholics. They have a big difference between the Catholics and the Protestants. No one calls them Catholic terrorists. Why? So what we find that no religion teaches to kill innocent human beings. But there are more non-Muslims killing innocent human beings than Muslims. Now so-called Muslims who killed innocent human beings, they aren't Muslims. They aren't following the teachings of the Quran and the Prophet. But what the media does, media picks up these black sheep and they portray as those exemplary Muslims. So the media is to blame, number one. Media. The media can change black into white, day into night, hero into villain, villain into a hero. You can hear my talk, is terrorism a Muslim monopoly? And you'll get more details, inshallah. Thank you.